Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salaam Khan here. And continuing the topic of exponential and sinusoidal signals. Well, in the previous video, I forgot to tell you that these signals that we are studying over here, they are under the heading of basic signals in systems and in signals and systems, right? So the first that we saw the complex exponential signals, those we saw in the continuous time domain. Today we see them in the discrete time domain. Over here they are also called complex exponential signals or sequence. So they are also called a sequence in, in the discrete time domain most probably. Because I have not seen this word sequence in the continuous time domain uh, uh, discrete time signal. Okay? Well, I have not seen them in the con in this word in the continuous time domain. I saw it over here. Okay, So you, you, you check it in the continuous as well. Fine. So now generally you know that generally this signal is represented let's say x of n. So this is equal to c alpha to the power n. This is how it is generally represented. Where c and alpha are uh, normally complex numbers. Okay. c and alpha are generally complex numbers and this you know. Okay. c and alpha they are generally complex numbers so now depending on this let's say the first case we take is that if both of them are real if both c and alpha are real so what would be the case in that form so it would only be c is equal to and if we assume alpha a c to be 1 also, so this would only be alpha to the power n. We would have a signal as x of n equal to alpha to the power n, which means that the whole thing now would depend on alpha because what happens is that n is, a, uh, is the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, these are proper finite values. So now what do you have is depending on this alpha, we have two types, okay. So if this alpha magnitude could either be greater than 1 and this alpha's magnitude could be less than 1. So if greater than 1 is the case, we have an exponential rise. We have an exponential rise. And if it's less than 1, so we have an exponential decay. And you know this, right? So, so let me draw them over here. So if this is the case of for, 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 for alpha greater than 1, so let's say this is for alpha greater than 1. The magnitude of alpha is greater than 1 for this particular case. And similarly for the, for the alpha's magnitude to be less than 1, we have it like this. Isn't it so? It is, right? Alpha's magnitude is less than 1. Now, if the magnitude of alpha is equal to 1, so this would be a constant signal. If the magnitude of alpha is equal to 1, so we would have a constant signal. And this would be a unit signal if C is supposed to be 1. If C is not equal to 1, so we would have a constant signal equal to C. So, 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 so let's say if this is the n axis, so this would be equal to C. This is your x of n if alpha is equal to 1. Now if alpha is a negative 1. Wait. This was for alpha's positive magnitude, okay? If if alpha is negative, so what would happen is that now for positive values of alpha, you have only one direction of it. The magnitude is increasing or decreasing, but it is only in one direction. Alpha is positive means what? Only one direction. Fine. And similarly, now if you have alpha is negative, if alpha is negative, so you will have it in both the directions. And how is this? So let's say we have a negative 2. Negative 2 is the value of alpha, right? 
So first you have negative 2 to the power y. Then you have negative 2 to the power 2. Negative 2 to the power 3. Negative 2 to the power 4. And so on. So now what is the case? So negative 2 to the power 1 is a negative 2. Fine. Negative 2 to the power 2 is a positive 4. Negative 2 to the power 3 is a negative 8. Then we have positive 16. Then a negative 20. And this is the case. So which means now you have them in both the directions. Is that okay till here? All right. Now uh, the next case. So the next case so I remove this. Okay, you, you know the, this what, what the four directions mean. So that was case number one. Now, case number 2 is, let's say the magnitude of C is supposed to be 1 and alpha is supposed to be purely imaginary. Beta is supposed to be imaginary and I'm going to tell you right now what beta is. Let's say beta is imaginary. What is the spelling of imaginary? Do we have a J? Do we have a G? I, have, I believe we have a J. G? J. Whatever it is. No problem. Okay, so beta is supposed to be imaginary which is equal to j times omega naught. This is a pure imaginary number. Beta is what? It's like this. So we have c times exponential of j beta n. Which means that we have replaced alpha by exponential of j beta. So this is what I'm doing. So c is supposed to be 1. Beta is supposed to be purely imaginary. We have the function's value x of n is equal to exponential of j times beta n. This is called a, a complex exponential signal in, in what? In the discrete time domain. So I will write over here, this is a complex exponential signal and you know that this is in discrete time domain. This is a real exponential signal. C times alpha to the power n. This is a real exponential. If you have C also over here, let's say, so this is a real exponential signal in the discrete time domain. Now again, this signal is closely related to sinusoidal signals. Closely related to sinusoids and what is that sinusoid so I will write it over here x of n this is equal to a times cos of omega naught n plus the phase difference phi now in the in the continuous time domain I told you that the complex exponential signal is always periodic for each and every value of omega naught Fine. That was an important property of the continuous time complex exponential signal. Over here, this is not the case. This signal may or may not be periodic. Well, this is periodic, but in a finite range, not for each and every values. The periodicity of property of this, we leave to the next video. We'll see that in a detail. For now, that's it for case number two. All right. Now we come on to case number 3. Wait, let me check the book first. We had real exponentials, now we have sinusoidal signals over here. Okay. Case number 3 would be what? Fine, fine. Case number 3. So, so I remove all of it, right? So case 3 we take what? We take both C and alpha to be imaginary, to be complex, to be complex, okay? C and alpha are complex, not imaginary. And we take them in their polar forms. So let's say that we have the value of C is equal to what? The magnitude of C exponential of J theta, right? Yes, J theta. And similarly, we have for alpha, 
for alpha we have the magnitude of alpha exponential of what is it it's j omega naught n j omega naught n is that okay so now now what would be our signal x of n would now be so for c we have F, we have this for c and then for alpha we have this j omega naught n isn't it so we don't have an n over here okay it's j omega naught so this n is the previous one all right so uh do we have any other point yes if you combine it okay so let's say we combine it okay so let's say x of n is equal to now what would happen if is c is over here alpha to the power n i will bring over here alone and then you have exponential of j times omega naught n plus theta theta alpha whatever it is so now have a look we saw that this c times alpha to the power n this is a real signal and this the second part is a complex signal so which means we have a real multiplied by a complex so which means this x of n now is a complex quantity and the value of this or the graph of this solely depends on the value of alpha so now depending on alpha we will have different cases okay so so let's say we uh, so we have three cases depending on the value of alpha the first is let's say if alpha is greater than 1 so if the magnitude of alpha is greater than 1 so what do you have you have a growing sinusoid you have a growing sinusoid and how is this so it is like this so I would draw proper sinusoid uh, increasing sinusoid over here fine so, so, so you, you, you can, can, can confirm it from the book that I'm drawing it properly. Fine. It is fine, right? And so on. So, so this is an increasing sinusoid here. Look, the magnitude is increasing at each and every point. Now, if the magnitude of alpha is less than one, if the magnitude of alpha is less than one, so this would be a decaying sinusoid. And that I will draw it over here again. So let it be proper. So let's say this is the case. This is the king. So you can skip this part of the video as well. Whatever you like, you can speed it up. And in, in this sort of a fashion, this will continue. Fine. So this is for a decaying sinusoid. Now, if you have the value of this magnitude of alpha is equal to 1. So you have a proper sinusoid, which means this is a constant sinusoidal signal. And which is in this form it would be. And that's all about it, okay? So I don't, uh, I think I don't have any other point left. So let me read out some points from the book if I have. So I get back to the start, okay? I get back to the start. Discrete time complex exponential signals or sequence defined by that value. We've already seen uh, where we have this real exponential signal. If alpha's magnitude is greater than one, grows exponentially with n. If it's less than y, we have a decreasing exponential. If alpha is positive, 
are on the same sign but if alpha is negative then alternating we have uh, we've seen that note that if alpha is equal to 1 then x of n is a constant equal to c if alpha is negative 1 then x of n will uh, will do what which will alternate between plus c and minus c i've told you all of that now sinusoidal signal this was the complex exponential the purely imaginary where beta was purely imaginary that was related to this they say that these have infinite total energy but finite average power and these are the signals which I have drawn, okay? Now, uh, these are some sinusoidal signals they have drawn which we see in the next video, okay? Now, the general complex exponential signal, this was case number 3 if we have both of them complex, okay? So, well, you can write this as what? You can write this from the Euler's theorem that is this also, okay? C, to, C alpha to the power n C alpha to the power n you can write as they have written it over here you can write it as the magnitude of c the magnitude of alpha to the power n and this exponential to the power j omega naught plus theta so you can write it as cos of omega naught plus theta cos of omega naught n plus theta and plus j times uh, sine of omega naught n plus theta sine of omega naught n plus theta and this is common to both of them so you can write this signal as over here also fine now again they say if alpha is equal to 1 the real and imaginary parts of a complex exponential signal are sinusoids okay so both the real and imaginary parts would be sinusoids for so alpha is equal to 1 they correspond to sinusoidal signals multiplied by a decaying exponential this is the case for alpha greater than 1, they correspond to sinusoid with, uh, multiplied with, in, with rising exponentials. And that's all about it. The periodicity property we see in the next video. Okay, So that's all about it. See you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.